So the blunderbuss. Um, it's been quite a journey for me to get used to this weapon and figure out what kind of build that I want to run with it. But after quite a bit of testing, I have come to what I feel fits my playstyle with the weapon. And um, I'm overall pretty satisfied with the, the weapon in its entirety. The previous weapon that we got in the game, uh, the Void Gauntlet, was kind of uh, a rocky journey for the game because it released not only with bugs but being pretty overpowered and it took them quite a while for them to fix those bugs so the weapon for a very very long time was just in a state of being very um, controversial to the community we either hated it or you loved it and um, the devs said that they were going to try to go ahead and take a look at their mistakes and try to learn from them and i can definitely say that they've done that uh both with bugs and with releasing this weapon it doesn't seem like it is super overpowered um or underpowered when i first started using it i honestly did feel like um, i thought it didn't do a lot of damage but like i said it took me a lot of time to get used to the weapon itself um uh, but yeah like i said the thing that really made it hard for me to get used to it was um, honestly figuring out the playstyle. I primarily use, as if you don't know, a Rapier Fire Staff and Rapier Ice Gauntlet build, and both of those have very distinct playstyles. The Ice Gauntlet, uh, I play very hyperly aggressive and close range, and the Fire Staff, I play more fluid, where I'm kind of dipping in and out of close and long range combat. Um, but the blunderbuss kind of didn't really fit either of those play styles and um, it was quite difficult for me to figure out how I wanted to use the weapon because the abilities themselves uh, don't really, at least for the rapier, don't really allow for setups with the uh, rapier itself. And by that I mean um, you can't really use a lot of blunderbuss abilities into rapier abilities to set up combos. Um, you can sort of with a blast shot, but the issue that I had with blast shot was um, a majority of the time you can really only use this ability on melees. Uh, if you're chasing down somebody who's ranged and trying to run away from you, it's really hard to land the ability. And most of the time, uh, the people who are in your face and melee are usually running um, strength builds. And they have grit on pretty much every attack that they're doing. So it makes it really, really hard to land the ability. Um, you can use it with flesh, but like I said, I just didn't like the fact that most of the potential targets that I could use it on, I had to find an opening through their grit. Um, so one of the problems that I ran into was just trying to find an ability setup that I liked. Um, but as I use the weapon more, I kind of realized how i wanted to use the weapon with my playstyle, um which i'll kind of go over more once i start going over some more of the pvp footage but um a lot of it comes down to actually the passives the abilities themselves i kind of use to just pepper opponents and put in damage to uh provide openings for my rapier or just to escape and give myself movement. But the thing that I really, really like about the Bunderbuss is actually the, the passives that it has. Um, fortifying aggression on the containment tree, on a roll, which is a really, really big one, and uh, last chance. All of these give you fortify or damage reduction in some sense. Um, on a roll is one of the ones that's really, really nice because it gives you a stacking um, damage reduction buff anytime you use an ability. So you can set this up for when you wanna use it. And the way that I've ended up using this weapon is just making it, or making my rapier into more of a skirmishy uh, kind of play style instead of more of a hit and run like it is with my other two weapons. The amount of damage reduction that you can end up stacking allows you to kind of stay in fights longer. And um, it actually has been a really, really fun playstyle to try to learn and get used to because it is way different from both my Fire Staff and my Ice Gauntlet. Now, I mentioned that the Bunderbuss doesn't have a lot of synergy 
offensively with the rapier with any of its abilities besides blast shot but the amount of displacement that the abilities have both with the uh shrapnel shot and net shot it allows you to really really dictate spacing and that part of the weapon is really really fluid with the the rapier um you see we're kind of just on the edge of a zurich here trying to attack sun we get two stacks of our on the roll buff right away to be able to just pretty much tank the flamethrower damage from this mage and we switch right into the rapier and put him down with uh, our evade combo net shot is also a super hard counter to gravity well as you saw right there um as long as you have it up and you remember to pop it uh once you get caught in the middle of that you get a pretty much free get out of jail free card with that um but you see i'm just kind of dancing on the outside of the zerg you get a really, really nice dodge on that screen to not get caught there. Back away with a backwards evade into a net shot. Create a bunch of distance and um, pretty much separate ourselves from the bulk of the enemies who are trying to take us down there. Um, we kind of get faced with a void gauntlet, ice gauntlet user. So I am trying to be wary here to not get caught in a scream or a shower. And I am trying to be a little bit aggressive. But as I'm realizing that his ice shower cooldown is coming back up, I'm trying to just kind of bait that out and uh not get caught by that so i'm not really committing to too many combos um and you see kind of as i get him kind of peppered up here with the uh combos you see him throw down the eye shower there but the zerg kind of turns around uh somebody who's low health kind of just retreats right in front of us we get the kill once again retreat with both the blunderbuss and the rapier um i was gonna go in on that uh fire mage again with the on the roll passives but you see that he gets a lot of reinforcement so we just do a backwards evade again into a net shot and those two abilities really really give you a lot of um time and utility in fights which is one of my favorite parts about the weapon so far taking a look at the weapon offensively this far in the video you're probably wondering what i meant by the title um and i kind of touched on that a little bit when I mentioned that it doesn't fit out of the play styles that I'm used to. Um, but the way that I've found myself using this weapon is actually just playing more into the rapier. Um, I was trying to find setups with the blunderbuss, uh, and it, like I said, it doesn't really work like that. The defensive passives, like I mentioned, and the um, damage that it has pretty much just make it to where it's creating openings for me to play on the rapier um we have ourselves in a 2v1 here and um we have a rapier player and a bowman and the blunderbuss is allowing us to keep on our feet and not get um hit by too many of these shots uh while creating openings for our rapier every time we get within close range we hit him with either a light attack a claw shot or a light attack shrapnel blast um and then go into the rapier and try to put some damage into him but as i'm realizing that his movement is going to make this fight take uh, a little bit longer than I'd want. We switch our attention to the uh, Bowman here. And we put a lot of damage into him with the, the Blunderbuss. And um, I'm trying to see if I can just find an opening with my Rapier to put him down quickly and turn this into a 1v1. Um, it doesn't really seem to be switching to his Spear <laughs> to do uh, anything in melee. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can just find an opening to get that hit right there. The backstab which staggers him. We get a couple of more hits into uh, the evade on the rapier. And then we put him down. And we're left back to the 1v1 here. But as I mentioned, we do a really, really nice evade there actually to um, dodge his pillar. But the blunderbuss is just trying to create openings for our rapier here. So every time I get in close range, um, I'm either going to try to go all in with the rapier. Or displace ourselves and find an opening. You see, we get a really, really nice net shot into the claw shot, into the shrapnel shot there to put a lot of damage into him. Um, switch to the rapier, and we're trying to chase him down now. We have him on the back foot, pretty much. Do a really, really nice roll into the evade, into the light attack there, and we're just trying to keep up the pressure. Switch to the blunderbuss, and we have him um, very, very low, but the secondary player has respawned here. Um, we do manage to finish the kill there, but like I said, trying to find openings um and the way that we do that with the blunderbuss is um just by getting in their face and um softening them up with one of these abilities and not only are you putting in damage with the shrapnel blasts or the claw shot 
but you're getting that um, on the roll um, defensive buff to then allow you to stay in your rapier even longer. The reason why I haven't gone over my build or my attribute setup or anything for what I was running is because pretty much the entire time that I was running the weapon, I kind of just threw on a blunderbuss uh, with my previous builds, attribute, and gear. Because honestly, the way that I like to kind of discover builds that I like is to just um, put time into it uh, with the perk setup that I find. And if I can find any amount of synergy before I invest damage into it, um, then I know that it's at least worth my time uh, going forward. But this is the perk setup that I've ended up on. As I mentioned, these are the abilities that I'm using. Pretty much everything in the containment tree. Um, we don't have it maxed out yet, but uh, fortifying, aggression, and unload are going to be the only two passives on this tree. Unload is super important because this is where a lot of your burst is going to come from. Um, fortifying aggression really helps remember when you have uh, the strength players in your face. Besides that, though, everything else has pretty much gone into the chaos tree to uh, get those defensive passives that I mentioned. So on a roll, really, really, really good ability. Um, we kind of have to get uh, some of these passives to get last chance, but they're actually not that bad. Uh, bite back is going to just help reduce our cooldowns a little bit. Buckshot is really, really nice when you're in outnumbered fights um, because you can switch targets and um, essentially get a damage buff um, for the next time that you switch back to a target. Um, artillery is nice for when you do that claw shot animation cancel because um, it'll buff the damage of that quite a bit. Um, but last chance is the other perk that I would definitely recommend. And with the last two points, I'm probably going to end up getting either deep load um, or ramp with future planning. Um, the attributes that I've ended up running is a pretty much one of the only setups that I've found is viable with the rapier. Um, we're doing 50 strength, um, 100 intelligence, 200 dex and 150 con. Um, and we don't have any um, specific perks for the blender bus yet um but like i said this is not necessarily a build video um it's more so just my initial thoughts on the weapon now that i've kind of arrived at what i want to run for it um we're definitely going to be playing with it a lot more and um i'll be doing some more videos on once i kind of find a more specific build but um yeah let me know what you have all thought of the weapon if you've used it yourselves um as always, thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And as always, have a great day.